Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD 2017 tutorial video. In this video we're going to be considering object snaps. So if we open up a new drawing, uh, we select our usual one and zoom all, which brings us to the limits of the drawing as discussed in a previous video. Uh, okay, so if we look at object snaps, uh, if we start off with a simple line, uh, so we'll start off with a line here, I've still got my polar tracking on from previous, so now that's 90 degrees, we know that. Uh, so down here we've got the object or O-snap option, uh, the shortcut key is F3, so if you watch the blue box there when I select, uh, when I press F3 it turns it off, when I press F3 it turns it on again. Uh, you can also uh, select many object snaps by holding down shift and right clicking uh, your mouse button and that will bring up uh, several uh, different uh, options here that you can use so you can just select these as a one-off if you like uh, or you can have them permanently on uh, down here so at the moment these are the ones that I've got activated so I'll turn them all off to start with uh, and then we'll show you what all these different points mean so let's say I want to draw a line uh, from the end of this uh, line here I want it to join up and extend somewhere else if I select the line tool again uh, now I've got no uh, O snaps on at all at the moment, in fact they're all off and the box is greyed out. So if I think, well I can get pretty close with that with my mouse. So I'll zoom into this point, I reckon if I select about there, then I'm pretty much on that. So I'll draw my line from there uh, and that's that's joined up. Uh, so let's just put my polar tracking on just for the sake of argument. So I think that that is pretty close to the end of that. The problem is if I zoom in very quickly you can see that actually it hasn't met up with the end of that line at all and that's going to cause me problems later on. So having zoomed in, well maybe I can draw the line, let's let's get rid of this line, this line's clearly wrong. Let's see if I can uh, select the end of that line there, I reckon that's that's got to be close, that's got to be somewhere about right, just there. So I'll draw my line there now instead. If I zoom in very quickly again you can see that I'm nowhere near, I'm actually not on the end of that at all which again might cause me some problems and we'll have this same process over and over again if I continue to zoom in and think that I've selected the end of that and then zoom in some more I'll find that actually I haven't. So uh, that's because AutoCAD is so beautifully accurate but also uh, it presents us with uh, uh, just challenge that we need to overcome and the solution is to use object snaps. So if I expand the object snap menu, now if I want to select the end of that line, uh, if I turn on the end point uh, option and keep that on and then come over here, if I want to draw a line that uh, connects to the end of that line, if I get my mouse uh, pointer quite close to the end of the line you can see that we end up with that um, uh, solid uh, green box there that appears. So if I select near that then my line now, doesn't matter how far I zoom in you can see that my line is fixed to the end of that first line. So zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and I am constantly, doesn't matter how close I get, I am fixed onto the end of that line now because it's snapped to it, it's moved uh, directly to it. So I can now draw my line in whatever position I want so I'll just draw a random arbitrary line like that. So let's say I now want to draw a line that comes off the middle of this line here. Uh, so uh, again, I could eyeball it. I could find the start and the end points and perform a calculation to find the exact midpoint and then type in the first point that I want it to be. But all of that's a little bit laborious. So again, let's use the object snap. Now, end point is still on. I'm going to leave uh, all the snaps on that I uh, as I go through this because uh, it will help me to illustrate a point a little bit later on in the video. So now I'll select the midpoint snap, like so. So midpoint is now activated. Uh, and I want to start my line from the center of here. So what now happens is I move my uh, pointer somewhere to close to where I think uh, the midpoint of the line is. You can see that we get this solid uh, green triangle uh, just below the cursor there. So that is the midpoint of this line. So I can uh, now produce that line from there to there and I know that that is exactly in the middle of that line which is quite useful. 
So let's have a look at the next object snap now, which is center. <clears throat> so let's say I want to draw a circle. So there's my circle. Now inside the middle of this circle, I want to draw uh, another object. Let's let's go with another circle in this case. So I want to put another circle in the middle of there. Now again, I could, if I want to, I could probably open up the properties panel uh, using PR space, select the circle, uh, and that will give me the center coordinates. So my next circle, I could just type in those coordinates. But as you can see, because I've placed this in an arbitrary position, the uh, Y value is uh, quite a number of digits long. Uh, it's uh, seven digits long uh, plus the decimal point, which is quite a lot of keys to have to type in, especially if I'm going to do something repetitively. So uh, the better way to do it is to bring up the O snap uh, options and select the center option. So notice it's the center uh, of a circle that we've got there. So this will be a little bit different, something that we'll look at momentarily. So uh, I want to put another circle bang in the middle of this one. Uh, if you notice when I first select my circle uh, there's nothing to indicate that the, where the center of that original circle is. If I want to produce where the center of that circle is, and this will work for uh, radii as well, I have to move my mouse over the target circle and that brings the snap, uh, it sort of wakes it up. Um, another useful option that you can use here is you can use that as a starting point for something else. So if I wanted to start another circle that is a certain distance away from there, then I can uh, hover over that to activate it and then move the mouse along it. So I could now just type in a value uh, and put my new circle where I want it to be on that line. But I'm happy for this to be in the center to illustrate the O snap function. So again, uh, just a random sized circle in the middle there. Uh, and I push the wrong button, which happens often on AutoCAD. So if I left click instead of hitting enter, uh, I'll produce the circle in the position that I want it to be in. So that is now dead in the middle of that circle. It's important to bear in mind that it is not uh, permanently bound to this. There is a command that will do that, but that's uh, again something that we'll look at much further down the line. This circle, uh, we've just used this circle as a reference point to create this one. We can now move this round if we want. Uh, we could move that to wherever we want to uh, at all. So it's just that's just where we've created it uh, for its starting point. Uh, now for the geometric uh, center, uh, so we've got the center of a circle or a radius. Now if we want to look at the geometric center, this is something else again. If I produce uh, a rectangle, so if I draw a rectangle like that, uh, and then I want to uh, again put something in the middle of that, so let's say I want to put a circle in the middle of that, uh, you can see if I hover over this, there is there's no center to that. Again, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Because we've got the mid snap highlighted, if I activate that point by just moving my mouse over it uh, and produce that uh, tracking line there, the dotted green line, uh, so that gets me the center of the X uh, value of the rectangle. And if I highlight that one as well and activate that one by moving my mouse over it, I can produce that one and as I get near to that original tracking line that appears, so I could use that as the midpoint, that will give me the center uh, of that shape, which is obviously uh, really useful. Uh, so that creates my circle. Uh, if however, I don't want to spend all that time doing that, if I activate the geometric center, uh, then what will happen now is when I go to uh, put my circle on, if you move your mouse over the object, uh, you can see that it creates the uh, the symbol here, the sort of uh, star symbol uh, with a green line around it, green circle around it, and that is the geometric center. And you can see when you hover over uh, the point, if you leave your mouse still, it will uh, pop up there, geometric center. It will tell you which snap you're on. Because sometimes you might find that a lot of snaps end up uh, very close to each other, and you might end up selecting the wrong one by accident. Again, more on that in uh, in just a moment. So we can use that geometric center there uh, to create our circle. Uh, and there it is. That's nice and simple. Just something to watch out for. If you create an irregular shape using lines, so let's uh, just create uh, an arbitrary shape here using lines. Uh, and there you can see we've got just this, this random arbitrary shape. 
uh, if I want to put something in the geometric center of this, uh, if I want to put a circle in the middle of that, say, when I come over this shape, over the lines here, you can see it's not bringing up the geometric center position uh, for this shape. And that's because I've created this with lines, with individual lines. If, however, I create a similar shape or the same shape using polylines, so I'm not going to be too fussy about this, this can just be uh, to demonstrate a point. Uh, if I create a uh, shape out of polylines, uh, now bear in mind when I select that it's all one object, so all of those lines uh, are considered to be a single object and now they're an enclosed object as well. So if I now want to draw a circle in the geometric center of this shape, when I uh, move my mouse over this shape, it produces the tracking point in the middle that is the geometric center. So if you want to put something in the geometric center of an irregular polygon, an irregular shape, uh, use a polyline to create it. Don't use a line to create it. And that way you can uh, use the geometric center snap, which is quite useful. Uh, some of those that we'll look at now, uh, if you want to use the node, you basically you can just create a single point uh, in workspace uh, and that will uh, then snap to that if you have the node activated. Quadrant uh, will uh, snap to the four key points on a circle. So if I want to draw uh, a line coming off uh, the north, east, south and west positions if you like of a circle, uh, we should call them 0, 90, two, uh, 180 and 270, uh, then when you move your mouse close to it it creates this uh, diamond uh, shape uh, so there my line is now connected to the zero degrees position of that circle so that's the quadrant snap uh, intersection so again if uh, I come back to my lines here that I started with if I draw a random line across here like that no particular position on it and then I want to create uh, again a line coming off there or a circle coming off there or anything like that. Uh, if I have the intersection snap activated uh, then uh, I can uh, select that and it will put it exactly uh, on the middle of that. So you'll notice it produced that uh, cross shape, uh, the X shape in the middle of the triangle there. Uh, sorry, where the two lines crossed uh, it created the X shape which shows that you're on the intersection snap. Um, just to illustrate a point here, you can see we've got a number of snaps that are all quite close to each other now. Uh, we've got the intersection, we've got the center point of that line, we've got the center point of that line. If your mouse isn't letting you select the one that you want, so let's say you're close to it but it keeps jumping between the center line and the intersection, if you just leave your mouse still uh, and press uh, tab, what it'll do is it'll cycle through the points that are available to you in the vicinity. So we've got the end point, the end point, and the midpoint like that. So again, if we hover over this line, we've got the midpoint, uh, we've got the two end points, top and bottom, and it'll cycle through the ones that are that are available to you. Uh, so that's uh, that's just a, a useful thing for uh, when you're struggling to get the right snap. Of course, you can just turn snaps on and off uh, using this shortcut. Uh, so it's it's just entirely up to you. Uh, a couple more snaps just to discuss now. A lot of these are fairly self-explanatory, so you'll be able to uh, to use these. Uh, and again, some of these will be explained a little bit more in a later video. Uh, perpendicular snap. So if we want to draw a line uh, coming off uh, this uh, line here, so we want it to come from there. Uh, and as you can see, this tracking line is showing the perpendicular uh, snap. So let's um, let's start there, and we want this to be perpendicular to that. So you can see there that when we uh, highlight that, uh, it brings up the perpendicular symbol there, uh, which is basically just a right angle. Uh, so it'll help us to uh, produce that perpendicular snap uh, when we need it. So the perpendicular snap can be slightly better illustrated. So we've got a line here that's uh, sloping off. So if I produce another line uh, off this line, uh, so let's uh, put it here. Uh, this will be better expressed if you turn off polar tracking if you've got it on. Uh, so let's start our line 
somewhere a little bit random. So there's our line. So if we want it to snap perpendicularly to that line, you can see there it's brought that up. So that angle there is now 90 degrees from there to there. So our next snap that we'll uh, consider uh, is the tangent snap. This is a very important one. Uh, so the tangent snap is uh, quite an important one because generally speaking lines that go to circles uh, should form tangents with them. So uh, a tangent as we discussed in our circle videos uh, is uh, it's a mathematical line, it's very specific uh, and it's the point where a line that crosses a circle only touches it in one position. So again if I uh, just briefly illustrate this, if I draw a line there you can see that line is touching this circle in uh, two positions, it's touching it here and here. So a line uh, that only touches a circle in one position is called a tangent line and it's got uh, all sorts of important mathematical properties uh, but what we'll look at right now uh, is how we can create it. So let's say I want to create a tangent line from the end of this line so I've got my end point uh, and I want it to be tangent to here so I've got my tangent symbol, uh, my tangent snap selected already and you can see here that when I get close to it uh, that line, that snap there which is a circle with a line above it uh, is the tangent snap so if I just click there what it's done is it's uh, if this line were to continue past there you'd see that it would only touch that circle in one position it's almost impossible to get that drawing it manually so that's a really really important uh, function uh, and you'll be using that one an awful lot so uh, just bear that in mind uh, on the O snap menu uh, and the last one that we'll look at is the parallel snap so uh, we'll turn this on now so let's say I want to draw a line that's parallel to this one uh, so I'll start my line arbitrarily here and then if I move my uh, pointer uh, to this line so again it's showing you there's your perpendicular snap uh, and my uh, parallel snap is ruined here so if I press tab it should give me it's not doing it. there it is so there's my parallel uh, snap so if I just now uh, if I click there it'll put the line there so if I just move the mouse away what it's done is because I've hovered over that parallel image what I've now done is when I get back to the position where it's close to being parallel it'll produce this tracking line uh, which shows that it is absolutely parallel so that we can uh, select that there like that so that line is now perfectly parallel to that uh, and we can prove that if we uh, measure the angle and select uh, that uh, item and that item uh, you can see there it says that the lines are parallel so it's made those absolutely parallel with each other so uh, that is uh, some of our object snaps the most common ones that you'll be using uh, there'll be other ones featured in future videos uh, for now I hope this has been helpful and clear and as usual if you have any feedback or comments then please let me know thank you very much goodbye